Now in this um, section, this is going to be part C, okay? So in part A and B, we worked on um, uh, logarithmic functions, exponential exponential functions going back and forth, solving with them. We learned about some basic properties, and now we're going to focus in this video on graphing. So I'm going to skip ahead to the slides that have to deal with graphs. So when you're graphing um, logarithmic functions, the first thing you want to recognize is that logarithmic functions are um, they are the inverse of exponential functions. And so by being the inverses, you're going to notice too that it is basically a reflection of an exponential function over the y equals x line. Okay, And so it flips over. So for example, this blue graph, this is the exponential function of 2 to the x power. And you know that 0, 1 is always a point. 1, b, or 1, 2 in this case, is a point you know that this graph is going to go up like that. You know that the exponential graph has this asymptote of y equals 0. That's, you know, the basic exponential graph that you learn to do. And if you notice, if you um, look at the logarithmic graph, it is the exact opposite. So in other words, the two ordered pairs that I plotted here were 0, 1, and 1, 2. And if you notice on, on my logarithmic graph, this is the log of the same thing, okay? Base 2 of x, and notice that you've got here, instead of 0, 1, this is your x and y combo in your exponential, we're going to flip it. So it's going to be 1, 0, and it's going to be 2, 1. And so, um, and my... Um, asymptote is now going to be the y-axis instead of the x-axis. And so all of a sudden you see that your graph looks like this and it's going to approach the asymptote there. So if I give you a table of values and I give you an exponential function and you have this x and this y combination here, these are your x's and these are your y's, right? If I want to do my logarithmic function or graph I basically take the chart and I make all the y's my x's and I make all the x's my y's and that's going to be my graph. So if an exponential function is given to you or an exponential graph is given to you, just swap the x and the y's and create your logarithmic function. That's it. Reverse the order. So on these, okay, again, if, it, uh, if they were given to you an exponential function and you were given an exponential graph, then obviously what you would do is just switch the x's and y's and graph the logarithmic functions. But when it's given to you as a logarithmic equation and you don't have the exponential graph to go off of, then this is the way I recommend you do it. What you're going to do is you're going to change the logarithmic form to exponential form, which would be 2 to the y equals x. You'll do... I'm going to do a little table of values, but you're going to see that you're not going to have to do this um, really in the future because the graph we want is so simple and so basic. Um, so you're going to come to this just to kind of do this first one, and you're going to make the y value 0. So I know that's a little opposite. Normally you're used to making x something and then finding y. You're going to make y 0, and you're going to find x when y is 0. You'll do the same thing. for You'll make y 1, and you'll find x. And um, that's really going to give you all the points you need, to be honest with you. You could keep going, but bottom line is you know what the graph looks like. You know the basic curve, and you see that when x is 1, y is 0. Um, when x is 2, y is 1. And you could keep going. I mean, I could do, okay, when x, uh, no, sorry, when y is, let's make y 3. Um, x is 8. And so you're like, okay, when x is 8, right, when y is 3, x is 8. So again, you notice it goes up really slowly. Um, so 8 and 3. And again, you see the curve. You know it. You know your asymptote in this. It hasn't been shifted or anything, so your asymptote is at the y-axis, and it's going to approach it. So you're able to graph it. What's really important is you want the general curve, and you do want the x-intercept. You want to know what that is. And in all of these, the x-intercept is going to be that basic value. Okay, and so it's really easy to find. 
And as always, when we graph, the one last thing is uh, we, you may be asked domain and range questions. And so remember that domain refers to the x values that are going to be in that graph, and the range refers to the y values that you're going to see in the graph. In all logarithmic functions, the range is always going to be all real numbers or from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then when it comes to the domain and range, you're going to, or the domain rather, you're going to look at all the x's here. And as you see, um, the x's are really going to be on the right side of this, um, you know, the line of x equals zero, which is your asymptote. So the domain is going to be from zero to positive infinity, and you're going to use parentheses because obviously there's no value when x is zero. Um, it's after the zero. Again, you'll come to this one. You don't see a base here, but you know that um, this problem here is equivalent to y equals log base 10 of x, and so this is 10 to the y equals x. Now again, you don't really need to do a table of values. All I need you to do is to plot a couple of points. So if y is 0, and again, you can write it, but if y is 0, I know that x is 1. And if y is 1, I know that x is 10. And so those two points are enough for me. I come over to here when x is 1, y is 0. Notice that's my x-intercept, which I always kind of want to have. And 10, 1, not, notice how slow it goes up. And again, I know my asymptote is on this y-axis, and so I'm going to draw that. And that's really the graph. That's all I need to see. So you don't have to go crazy on plotting and coming up with tables. This is enough. We know what the curve looks like, and this is enough information. Again, in this one, um, we're going to add, uh, lastly, the domain and range. So again, remember, our range is going to be all real numbers, or again, you can do negative infinity to positive infinity. The domain, again, is going to be from 0 to positive infinity. And obviously, it doesn't include 0. So that's why I put a parenthesis and not a bracket. Now, when I come to this graph, I know that this graph has had some kind of a transformation. Notice it's not just, this is y log base 10 of x minus 1. Well, this minus 1, because it's in there with the x, I know this is a shift one unit, and it's going to be opposite what I see. So if I see a minus 1, I know it's going to go to the right. So my asymptote is going to shift one unit to the right as well. So what I want you to do in this case is I want you to pretend that the minus 1 sort of wasn't there. So 10 to the y equals x, which we just graphed in the other slide, right? We know that when y is 0, x was 1, and when y was 1, x was 10. And so we're going to graph that first. So again, 1, 0, that's our x-intercept. We have uh, 10, 1. And we know it goes like this, and our asymptote is this y-axis. So this is the graph of this, right? This isn't the shifted part. This doesn't take into account the minus 1. Well, the minus 1 shifts everything one unit to the right. So all you need to do is take your asymptote and shift it one unit to the right, and take each point that you found and shift it one unit to the right. And so then you're just going to follow the same curve but everything has been shifted to the right. So the blue graph is the graph of the log base 10 of x minus 1. So again, you're going to graph the basic without the shift, and then you're going to include the shift last. And that's it. Now again, we do want the x-intercept, but in this case it was easy because the original x-intercept was at 1, 0, and this x-intercept is at 2, 0, and it's point. We always kind of want, wherever the graph crosses the axis lines, the y and the x the y-axis and the x-axis, we kind of want those points highlighted at all times. On this one, again, because this had a shift or a transformation, I have to be careful when I do my domain and range. Uh, the domain and range, or the range rather, is going to continue to be all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, the domain, however, is going to change. When my asymptote changed to the line of x equals 1, my domain changed from 1 to positive infinity. Um, and again, the 1 has a parenthesis because my asymptote means my graph is not going to touch any values when x happens to be 1. 
again here it's kind of the same thing um, normally I know that you have a plus two over here and you know that that's a shift up of two units we in logs we put it in the front because we want to differentiate you know is it x plus two like that or is it plus two apart so they kind of write it in the front so this is really um, log base 10 of x plus two or two plus it so I know that this is going to represent a vertical shift up two units okay so I know I'm going to go up two units but I still know that my basic graph is 10 to the y equals x which we've done multiple times so we know that that one we've done it on the last few slides we know it's 1 0 and 10 1 right we know the graph looks like this and we know that it approaches the asymptote so now all I'm going to do with that one is I'm going to shift those points up two units so this point is going to go up to this point is going to go up to my asymptote is going to stay in the same spot because a shift up won't move my asymptote and so I just follow the curve I know it approaches now here the issue is is that I need to figure out where it crosses this axis not because I'm going to expect you in any way to um, graph that point on the graph but I am going to want you to write it so Remember that when you're looking for an x-intercept, you make y equal to zero, right? When you're looking for a y-intercept, you make x zero. So if I go to this problem and I just make y equal to zero, two plus log base 10 of x, right? Well, first let me start by subtracting two from both sides. That seems like a reasonable thing that I might do. So now I've got negative two equals log base 10 of x and now that it's kind of in the right form I'm going to rewrite it as an exponential equation so I know that 10 to the negative 2 power equals x so 1 over 100 equals x so x is 1 over 100 and y is 0 so I know that this point here even though you can't tell is my x-intercept and this these are the coordinates of it 1 over 100 0 and this is something I would want you to just have written somewhere on the thing so again you'll have a couple of points the traditional ones like this one and this one and in this case you just have to identify the x-intercept on this one here again we're gonna add as the last thing our domain and range and again this graph shifted but it shifted up or down so a shift up or down um, again, all of my ranges are going to be negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers. My domain, a shift up and down, doesn't change my domain. So my domain is going to be as the basic logarithmic function, which is going to be uh, 0 to infinity like that. Now we're going to start graphing some natural logs. And again, it's not a whole lot different. I mean, this is y equals log base e of x minus 2 and when I get to this one I know that this minus 2 part represents a shift to the right of two units so of course I'm going to start out by graphing this part of it right without the minus 2 so e to the y power equals x remember that e is approximately equal to 2.7 so um, I'm not really going to need you to do 2.7 on the graph you could pick a 2 or you could make it three if you wanted mathematically and plot that. It's so close to 2.7, and I'll show you what I mean. So again, if I'm going to plot the basic points, I know that when y is 0, right, um, e to the 0 is 1. And if y is 1, I know e to the 1 is approximately equal, well, it's equal to e, right? Definitely equals e, which means it's approximately equal to 2.7 whatever. If you want to just plot 3, you can. So you can either do 2.7, whatever, or you could just do when x is 1, y is 3. That's a close enough approximation that I would be okay with. Okay, so it's up to you. So when I go to graph that E graph, I know that when x is 1, y is 0. And I know that when it's 2.7 or 3, somewhere... Oops, I don't want to color that in, though. Sorry when x is around here where e is that's why again we could probably use three y is one so whether you find it plot it here or you just plot it on the three like i'm okay with that 
Again, your asymptote is still at the y-axis, and you're just going to do your graph like that. It doesn't even have to be that far out or anything like that. Now, I have to shift this graph, and I'm going to have to shift it to the right two units because, again, that was my change. So my asymptote is going to go to the right two units, okay, and each point. So this point here was at 1. I know this one's going to be at 3. This other point up here was at 2.7, so 3.7, 4.7. So it could be at 4.7 or closer to 5. And again, I would be completely okay with that. And again, you just follow the curve. So the blue is the shifted. It's the one we want. But this is just so easy. You just graph the basic, and then you shift. And the x-intercept is located here at 3, 0, which is perfect. And again, the last thing we're going to do is add in the domain and range part. Again, the range, even in a natural log um, graph, it's still going to be all real numbers or, you know, like that. Um, my domain, again, I'm going to look at what my transformation was. And I see that my asymptote has moved from x is 0 to x is 2. And so I know that my domain has now shifted from 2 to positive infinity. Now this last problem is a problem that actually is a lot more complex because of the 2 minus x. We're going to skip this one because we're not going to give you anything like that. So in its place, I'm going to put a different problem for you. I'm going to put one that's more reasonable, more like what you're going to see. So let me give you one, y equals 3 plus natural log of x minus 1. And so that's still not a super easy problem, but it's much easier than the other one. So I know that this is a natural log, right? So let me just start, you know, writing what I do know. I know it's y equals 3 plus log base e of x minus 1. And I know that this is a shift up 3 units, and this is a shift to the right 1 unit. So if I know that, then I know the basic function, the basic graph is y equals log base e or ln of x, right? So e to the y equals x. That's the basic e graph which we did in the other slide. And again, remember that, you know, it's when y was 0, it was 1, and when y was 1, it was approximately 2.7. Our asymptote was at the y-axis and 1, 0, and 2.7, and 1. So somewhere around here, you graph this, you graph this, and that's the basic e to the x, or e to the y function. Now, this, now I have to take into account the shifts. So each one of these points is going to go up 3 and 1 to the right. So up 3 and 1 to the right, and this one is up 3 and 1 to the right. My asymptote, up 3 doesn't make a difference, but 1 to the right does. So my asymptote is now here. And again, I'm going to do the basic curve. Now, again, it's important that I identify this x-intercept. Again, when you zoom in, yes, it's going to be somewhere between 1 and 2, but obviously I don't expect you to cross at the perfect spot. But I do want to know where that intercept is. Okay, so again, what you'll have to do is you'll have to take that original equation and you'll have to set it equal to 0. So 0 plus log base e of x minus 1. Then I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I'm going to get minus 3 equals log base e of x minus 1. Um, I know that if I rewrite this as an exponential function, it's going to be e to the negative 3 power equals x minus 1 e to the negative 3 power is 1 over e cubed equals x minus 1. And if I'm trying to find x, right, when y is 0, I'm going to have to add 1 to both sides. So I've got 1 plus 1 over e cubed equals x. So when y is 0, x is 1 plus 1 over e cubed or I could write it as 1 over e cubed plus 1, 0. It's the same, same thing, okay? Um, and so this is the ordered pair. This is the location of this point, you know, in here where my line crosses. 
So I don't need you to like the graph to be perfect on it. I just need to see that you can calculate this X intercept and you can tell me what the coordinate is, even though we don't know the exact value. You don't even have to plug in E. That's, that's enough for me. Okay. So that's it. So again, plot the original uh, function, then do the shifts. It's that easy. Um, and identify the X intercept and make sure you also list the asymptote on the graph. And again here, I'm going to do my domain and my range. Again, all real numbers here, all real numbers, or negative infinity to positive infinity. And my domain here, I had a sh my range, rather, I'm sorry, was all real numbers or, or whatever. And then my domain, I shifted to the right one unit. My asymptote became x is 1, so I know this is 1 to infinity. And so, again, at any time, guys, we can ask you questions for uh, always be prepared to identify domain, range, um, uh, x-intercept, and y-intercept, okay? You know how to do these. We've taught you this from since we've been doing lines, and we've done it every time we've taught a function. So even if we mention it or not, just make sure you're always able to do that, okay?